we got my man Luis here who has this uh, sweet 89 block uh, that we're gonna put a cam into as well but this is more something that is a little closer to what you guys might have in your yard um, you know it's already got the pump still on there uh, it's got the you know the timing cover and all that good stuff so it gets a little bit more complicated when you have all this stuff still on the block okay so to get the cam in there uh, it gets kind of interesting when you're dealing with uh, a block that's assembled first you gotta take the water pump off then you gotta take the pulley and the harmonic balancer off after you do that you take off the timing cover which is behind uh, then you're gonna remove the rocker so that you can get the push rods out then remove the spider in the middle here and then remove the lifter so you can get the cam to go down the middle uh, without obstruction okay uh, in this case we're gonna remove the heads because we're putting GT40P heads on this block uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and remove the heads altogether but I'm gonna show you guys the steps that you can do uh, prior to doing that just so that uh, you can know how to do it without removing your heads so the first thing you're gonna do is remove the water pump now I can't give you a specific bolt size or socket size because um, these things have, these motors have been through so many hands there's no telling just try whatever socket until it works right now I'm using a 5 8 uh, to get these long stud bolts out and it, the reason why they're studs is because uh, there is a bracket that actually attaches to this these other bolts here they look like a mixture between 13 millimeter and 15 but who knows like I said before you want to make sure that you uh, just use whatever socket you can fit on there because you know people break the bolts they lose the bolts the, you gotta remember guys these these motors are getting kind of old man I mean you're looking at 30 years on some of them so uh, it's very rarely you're gonna have factory stuff in this particular department so let's go ahead and remove the water pump that's the first thing you want to do now I hope I don't have to tell you to drain all the coolant before you get this started but I'm gonna say it anyway make sure you drain all the coolant unless you want to make a mess then uh, after you take out all the bolts you just just hit it boom uh, this pump actually looks really good it's very possible that this is uh, this is new it's very tight still okay usually if the pump is worn this this uh, the seals here will be really worn out but this actually looks pretty good look at the back here it's still really nice and fresh so we're actually going to reuse this pump I'm going to go ahead and throw it in the blaster clean it up really nice and reuse this this is really a good pump to remove the water pump it took us one two three four five six seven bolts to get it out so next thing you want to remove is the uh, pulley there's four 14 millimeter bolts in this pulley here on this 5.0 motor um, the trick with this is if you try to take it off slowly or without an impact like me I, I don't like to use impacts very often see it rotates okay so what you want to do is you want to take the mallet just give it a quick whack it's kind of a shock and, and it'll loosen it okay without it rotating all right so boom there it is so the pulley's taken off probably just going to stick this in the sandblaster clean it up and paint it just give it some new life uh, but yeah so there it is so next thing you want to start to take it off here is the uh, harmonic balancer once again the engine is going to want to rotate so what I do is I take a screwdriver put it through one of these holes and then use a 15 16 socket and go ahead and slowly break that bolt loose all right there you go all right and there it is okay that is a crank bolt so now at this point we can use the puller and what the puller does like you guys saw on the explore disassembly the explore block disassembly video it pushes on the middle here while pulling the harmonic balancer off so to remove the harmonic balancer I'm using a uh, universal puller they actually have a tool specific for that um, but I'm using the universal because I do a lot of different things I showed you guys how to use this on the Explorer video so I'm just gonna go ahead and mount this up and mount this up and get this uh, harmonic balancer off as flat as possible okay so get it in there 
start driving it off again. So come put your hand underneath, you know, on the bottom here, just, you know, so when it finally pops, you just go drop it on your foot. And there it is. It is off. Now that we got the harmonic balancer off, we're gonna remove this timing cover. So to do that, you have one, two, three, four bolts atop here, and then there's four bolts in the oil pan that hold it in from the bottom, which is one, two, and three, and four under here. There's two bolts back here. Let me show you. There's this one and that one. And they're both 13 millimeter. Long as I've been doing this, I always forget those two. So now we're at the stage we're gonna get it off. So you just wanna put your hand underneath here so it doesn't come flopping onto the ground and damage it. And you're just gonna hit it with the dead blow. Okay. So just dance it around a little bit. It's gonna to wanna to fight you a little bit. There it is. Now we're looking at the timing set. Now this one, uh, as you can see, it's kind of janky. Do time for a change. Cam bolt, if I remember correctly, is 14 millimeter. I'm right. Boom. That's the cam bolt. Stick that to the side. Okay. Then you want to walk the, uh, the gear set away from the cam. Just back and forth. And there it is. It's off. Okay, boom. There we go. Turn the timing gear. Now we're looking at the cam thrust plate right here. Uh, we're gonna get this loose. You gotta be careful, guys, not to strip these because they're very flat. So, yeah, what we're gonna do is get it off with an 11 millimeter. Boom, there it is. All right. We're gonna move up top here to the uh, cylinder head area and get to working on taking out these lifters. So up top here, you wanna remove uh, the valve covers, which are this and this, with an 11 millimeter. Once you remove the valve covers, you'll have access to the rockers. Now that I have, I got the bolts out, let's take them out. Boom, it's off. Inside of the valley, the lifter valley here, there's going to be two 12 millimeter bolts. There's one here and one there. Going to remove those and take out the spider. All right, so now that we got these two 12 millimeter bolts out, let's remove the spider. Place it. These are the rockers. So, what we're going to do is uh, loosen the rockers enough so that we can get the push rods out. Now, if, since we're reusing all this stuff, you want to keep everything in. See how the push rod is loose here? And that comes out just like that, okay? Since we're reusing all this stuff, everything has worn into each other. So you gotta keep it in the orientation that it came out and the proper uh, valve that it came from, okay? So I'm gonna make sure we just kinda, I'm just gonna kinda rest it in there, just like that. Uh, you don't wanna mix them up because it just causes issues and it won't run right. So once you get that out, you can actually take the little keeper the spider keeps the keepers down. I showed you guys that in another video as well. And then you can actually get the lifter to come out. So let's go ahead and loosen all the uh, rockers here and, and get the push rods pushed to the side. We uh, went ahead and got all the push rods kind of just rested to the side here. Um, just, you know, don't, don't force them because you'll bend them and everything. So just want to do it, just, you know, just leave them on the side instead of taking them out and having to put them in order and everything. Then what you're gonna do is, you see these lifters, they got a little keeper or a dog bone, okay? I call them keepers, some people call it dog bone, okay? And you're gonna pull the lifters up, just like that, and I just rest them right near their bore, just like that. You wanna leave it in the bore of which you got it from because the circumference of the uh, lifter has gotten worn into the bore here and they're the perfect size, and you don't want to mix them up because my, one might have worn a little more than the other, and it make it too loose, and you lose all pressure, or too tight, and then the lifter sticks. So it was uh, running fine before we took this apart. So 
we're gonna leave it running just fine when we put it back together. And keeping everything where we originally got it from. All right, so you see how we got all the lifters kind of set up in their little spots? This is my way of avoiding um, having to put them in a box in their proper order and all that other kind of stuff, okay? It's time for the stock cam to come out. It's gonna have no obstruction. Let's get our removal bolt in there again. And we're gonna give it a little yank, okay? Now, we're not putting a new cam bearing, so guys, be careful taking this out. Nice and slow. You don't wanna gall the cam bearings as you're removing them. There you have it. That is the uh, stock cam that we're gonna remove. We, that we removed. He was wondering if it had a cam, but it doesn't. This is just stock cam, nothing fancy. So let's prepare the new cam to go in. The F303. So we got the F cam here. We're gonna go ahead and take out the uh, microfiber cloth and give it a nice uh, cleaning. Get all this old crap off. Uh, before we install it, we're going to use some of this Ultra Slick from Permatex. Really good stuff. Nice and tacky. And we're just going to go ahead and just ooze it on there. And just kind of work all the, the juice, as I call it, all the way around. Even though there's oil already in the motor, um, you do want to uh, make sure that the cam has some sort of lube. Yeah, this stuff will protect the cam at least long enough for the oil pressure to hit, okay? All right, so we got the cam all nice and lubed up with the uh, engine lube. It's all nice and tacky. Uh, Permatex really makes a good product here when it comes to this. It really sticks to it, you know? So, I'm gonna kinda go back in there nice and gentle, just like we did the one in Project Mayhem. Get in there nice and gentle. Grab our insulation bolt here. Oh, and there it is. F303 cam installed. All right, so here's the old pin. We just took some Scotch Brite and cleaned it up. Okay. Now, a new cam will come with a new pin, but since these are new and brand new, never installed, but the boxes were open, who knows where the pin went? Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and reuse this one here. All right, so there you have it. You want to make sure that the cam spins nice and free, and it does. Feels good. I don't feel any uh, any resistance. Uh, anything. I don't feel it hitting anything, which is really good. So uh, yeah, that's just the idea of getting the cam in the motor. Okay. Next thing you want to do is stick the lifters back in the bores. Go. Ooh, yeah. I can see the lift on this thing. It's crazy. I can already tell that the lift is a lot higher than the stock cam. This thing's gonna chop like crazy. Ooh, it's gonna be a monster. And after we get the lifters back in, we're gonna put the keepers back on and reinstall the spider. Now, we're not gonna do the rocker adjustment right now because um, I'm gonna put some GT40P heads on, the, on, on this block. So, right now, you're just gonna have to sit tight for another week. And then I'll show you guys how to do that properly. All right. So until next time, we got here junkyard dogging, baby. <laughs>